And when you come across these challenges, you need to also remember with every challenge you overcome, you become stronger. With every obstacle you find a way to navigate, you become smarter. With every person that hinders you and blocks you and tells you no, you also build your character. So with every stage and at every phase, you are becoming better. The thing that you will absolutely love is that feeling of self-confidence brimming from inside of you. When you start taking the steps that you were afraid to take before, only to take them and realize they were not as bad as you initially thought. Hello there my gorgeous ladies and welcome back to my channel. So for today we will be talking about potential and the potential that you have or better yet the potential you are yet to tap into but it's just lying dormant within you and if you were to unlock it and just develop it you will be amazed at what your life could transform into. The reason why I'm so passionate about the potential that we all hold is that for majority of us we don't necessarily have somebody or an encouraging voice around around us that tells us to tap into our potential, to tap into our passion and gives us that sense of fulfillment. So I'm hoping that by the end of this video, you would have taken away something that will allow you to start working and developing your own potential. So if this sounds like something that resonates with you, stay with me for the rest of the video and hopefully you can pick up one or two nuggets that you can take away with you to practice and to see whether you can tap into your potential. So the first thing I would like us to really look at when it comes to exploring our potential is writing down our aspirations. The reason why I say it's important to really tap in and figure out what your aspirations are is because half of us are not actually connected with ourselves or even know what our aspirations are because we're so busy running around trying to make sure that we're balancing all the plates that we have on our hands, trying to make sure the bills are paid, trying to make sure that life and all its admins are being covered. And it's completely understandable because I do the same thing too. But when you set aside some time to really look at what it is you are inspired by, what it is that you aspire to be and to attain, you will then come to realize that you may have been leading a life that's not even for you. That's why it's important to take a moment and to really realize, is what I'm doing in alignment with what I am made to do? And I don't want you to go down the rabbit hole of purpose and am I in my purpose and things of that nature, because yes, we can look at that, but there's also a thing of are you fulfilling your potential in whatever you're doing right now? You could be doing something that is not directly linked to, to what you would do just for the fun of it, but there's something within that that still connects to your potential and allows you to thrive more than other people. Perhaps you're working for a marketing company, but you don't necessarily want to be working in a marketing company, but you might just happen to work in a human resources capacity. You're dealing with people day in, day out, helping them with the queries that they may have about their employment and things of that nature. And deep down, and you're somebody who connects really well with people, you relate with people, you have time for people. So if that is your natural potential of communicating and tapping into other people and allowing them to feel comfortable, if that is something that comes naturally to you, then that role, although it may not be where you want to be in the long run, is something that is in alignment with who you are at heart. So this is why I'm saying we need to really understand what it is about ourselves that allows us to really feel fulfilled and accomplished in this lifetime because once we know that then we're in a position to really and truly go forward and build a life that is in alignment with who we are and within our value system so the second thing i would love for you to do is to take action it's all well and good knowing what we're passionate about where our potential lies and also what really gets us going and makes us feel fulfilled. But there's no point in knowing all of that if we don't put it into action. And the only way you can put it into action is by drafting a series of goals that are attainable. On this channel, we're all about accountability and also making things practical and attainable. There's no point of us creating a big grand plan that we have no intention of taking action on. So if you can, if say for example, you've noticed that you have the potential to be an orator, you have the potential to be a public speaker. So the first thing you may want to do is to say, I have not given myself enough opportunities to speak in public. I have not given myself enough opportunities to exercise my vocal cords in an open space. So perhaps one of the goals might be open yourself up 
to opportunities where you can start to speak and you can start giving speeches as an example maybe you can even open yourself up to joining a book club where perhaps you're the host and you're leading and you're able to kind of speak up and you're able to come out of the shell a little bit because some of the potential that we have because we haven't exercised it for so long we doubt it so in order for you to actually get over that doubt that you have about yourself within yourself you have to set small but actionable steps and put them into practice so in this case by going to those book clubs by going to networking sessions by going to some meetups with other people who also want to be public speakers you will be in a position where you start to believe in yourself because you see evidence of yourself being good at something and being good at what you know you have potential to be so number two is taking radical action but while you're taking action you have created goals that you're going to follow through on monthly yearly until you see your potential come to fruition and this ties in beautifully to what i want to say next when you have figured out what your aspirations are and you have created the goals and you have also taken action alongside those goals. The next thing you want to do is to be open and embracing the fact that learning is a lifelong process. Don't expect to write your aspirations, set your goals, take action and think that it's going to happen overnight. It will not happen. But what I would love for you to know is that you are worthy of the time you're investing in yourself. You are worthy of the energy you're investing in yourself. So if you can just put that in your mind and tell yourself verbally, I am investing this time in myself. It may take me a year or two, but I know the benefits that I will reap from it will be tenfold because I will feel better about myself. I would have actually lived and seen through my potential in this lifetime. And also, if your potential is something that impacts other people, my potential, you can say to yourself now, my potential would have impacted masses as a result of me taking action. And I'd like to point out that when I say lifelong learning, it means education education, it means life experience, it means trial and error, it means going at it over and over again until you have fully actualized your potential. And sometimes you may think that this is your potential, but on the journey to tapping into what it might be that you want to become, you may find that there's something else that really pulls at your heartstrings for the right reasons and you find that your potential may lay in something else so this is why i said be open be receptive and before you know it you will be living a life that is not only vibrant but a life that is tailored to you so i want you to embrace the lifelong process of exploring your potential because you are 100 percent worth it clearly l'oreal got it right because I'm worth it. <laughs> so one of the major benefits of doing the first three steps that I've just mentioned is that over time, you will start cultivating self-confidence in your potential. You will start cultivating self-confidence in who you are and also what you can contribute into your own life. It's very easy for us to point fingers at times and say, my life did not work out a certain way because this person hindered me or because my, my family were not privileged or because everyone else around me me, maximize my potential for their benefit and I got no use out of it. It's very easy to point a finger. But on this channel, as I keep saying, we're all about accountability. And one thing that you will absolutely love is that feeling of self-confidence brimming from inside of you when you start taking actions towards actualizing your potential, when you start taking the steps that you were afraid to take before, only to take them and realize they were not as bad as you initially thought. So I really and truly want to encourage you to go forward and to really think of yourself as somebody worth investing in. Put the time in, write down those goals, take some radical action, and also embrace that this learning thing is actually quite fun. You get to be curious, you get to learn new things, you get to meet new people. And in the process, you get to cultivate self confidence and that self-confidence is something that you cannot buy because it's something that you would have learned and also earned and also gained over a period of time through the results that you showed yourself. I'm not saying that every single thing I've mentioned will come without challenges. Of course, when you're trying to change, when you're trying to adapt, when you're trying to take a pivot into a different way of life and into a different way of thinking, it comes with its very own unique challenges. So I want you to understand that even though you may face obstacles and challenges, or you may even come across people who do not believe in you, and that then 
causes you to be doubtful about what you can achieve, I want you to always remember this is something that will benefit me more than it will cause me harm. Always remind yourself the fear that I am feeling may not actually be real. After all, as the saying goes, fear is false evidence appearing real. Sometimes we're so afraid of our own success. Sometimes we're so afraid of what we can attain that we stop before we even give ourselves a chance. So I don't want you to be thrown off by a small challenge along the way. I don't want you to be thrown off by an obstacle. And even if that obstacle and challenge presents as an individual or presents as a lack of finances or presents as a lack of time, don't be thrown off look at the situation, step back and think, what can I do to navigate this? What can I do to steer the ship in the direction that I need it to go to? What can I do to give myself a fighting chance? And when you come across these challenges, you need to also remember, with every challenge you overcome, you become stronger. With every obstacle you find a way to navigate, you become smarter. With every person that hinders you and blocks you and tells you no, and you find a way to speak the goodness into yourself, speak positivity into yourself and keep going, you also build your character. Character. So with every stage and at every phase, you are becoming better. So I want you to be encouraged that tapping into your potential may be hard and at times may seem impossible. But once you reach to that peak, which you will reach because I believe in you, you will find that everything planned out and played out just as it needed to, to get you there as a better and more refined version of yourself. So focus on overcoming the fear that's in your mind and in your heart. And also in doing that, focus on embracing resilience and building that internal strength to keep going. And I will close this off with number five, which is very, very important. Remember to celebrate your achievements. As we mentioned earlier, learning is a lifelong experience, a lifelong journey. You may come across some obstacles and you may come across some troubled water along the way into actualizing your potential. But when you learn to celebrate yourself, and it doesn't always have to be when you have a win, sometimes the celebration should and can come from you overcoming an obstacle that previously you would have run away from. Sometimes that celebration comes from you knowing that not so long ago, you would have not given yourself a chance. You would have never checked in for yourself or you'd have checked in for other people. Sometimes that celebration comes from knowing that you had a tricky relationship with somebody, you found a way to navigate it and you still came out unscathed and you still find a way to tap into your potential despite that disrupting you and your flow. Sometimes celebrating yourself is needed even when it's not a grand celebration. When you've been told all your life that you shouldn't celebrate yourself, you shouldn't be too egotistic, you shouldn't be this and you shouldn't be that, it will feel very foreign. But I want you to know, everything you're doing is for you and for your future and for your betterment. So the best thing you can do right now is when you attain something, don't stay there and celebrate for too long and throw a party for everything, but stop and acknowledge how far you've come. That's what I consider a celebration. Stop and give yourself a pat on the back for the journey that you're still embarking on. Stop and speak to people around you about your accomplishments and be proud of it. I want you to get to a point where when you achieve something, you do not do the fake humble thing and, 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 and give other people praise and give other entities praise. Give yourself an element of praise praise. Be thankful for your creator. Be thankful for your support system, but also be grateful for yourself. Tapping into your potential takes time, takes skill, takes perseverance, and it also takes acknowledging of the journey that you've taken so far. If you're a young woman watching this video, thinking of how to tap into your potential, feeling like you've got more inside of you than what you've brought out into the world, I want you to remember to give yourself time, have patience and trust the process. And I promise you in trusting the process and also being wise about the way you navigate through life, take your time to listen to yourself, take your time to seek wise counsel, take your time, pick up coaching where you need to and learn something new where you need to. Before you know it, your potential will unfold in such a beautiful way. And like I said in the beginning, you will start to understand things when you're looking back and seeing how everything aligned and tapped into you or connected to you 
at the appointed time so i hope you have enjoyed this video and i hope that you will all be looking to take one or two of these tips or every single one of them to start tapping into your potential because you are deserving of the life of your dreams whatever that looks like always thank you so much for tuning into this video if you enjoyed this one you may enjoy a few other ones that are up here and as always like share and subscribe and i'll speak to you very soon